Hey y'all, and back to my channel. Uh, hey y'all, <laughs> we's back. Us is just back for another edition of Uncover Girl this this week. Um, but just like promised, like we told you, we were gonna come and tell our complete <clears throat> testimony because we haven't um, talked about our testimony in its totality. So we don't have to go to different places and tell our testimony. We just tell y'all, watch the channel. Because uh, it's all on there if you want to know. So uh, Apostle is back with us on today. Hubby is back with us on today. Because we want to talk about the day, um, how it was that I knew that God was going to bring me through cancer. Um, I was assured that God was going to bring me through cancer. Um, and that is because back in 2015, both me and my husband were involved uh, victims of a, a gun shooting. Um, oh my God. I don't know if some of you are from the Orlando area. You might have heard back in 2015 how me and my husband got shot um, in the Washington Shore Shopping Center. Uh, where we were basically minding our own business and uh, doing our own business <laughs> and, and literally and got shot. So we want to tell you about that testimony, um, how how God brought us through that day. Um, I guess I'll start because kind of the first part of the testimony involved me um, basically hearing the Lord that day. It was November 18th, 2015. And my, my husband was in revival that week. And I was in school and um, we were also operating our own shop, which was um, Hardiness Clean Cut Greens. Because some, because some of you may know that my mother-in-law started this business way back in the 1970s. 90s. 1995 back in the 90s yeah mm -hmm. um and she would basically prepare uh pre-cut wash greens and it was a big success and she still had a following um from her business and everybody kept asking us when are you guys gonna bring the business back when are you guys gonna bring the business back and I was tired. It's funny. Somebody asked me that today. <laughs> <laughs> Aperture. No, we ain't doing that. But no, uh, seriously, I, I was tired of working. And I, was, I told my husband, I said, I think we got to bring the business back. Because I really wanted to do a business with my husband and with my family. That we could work together and pass that business on to our children. And because Hardman's Clean Cut Greens had such a impact in that community a reputable um, name. and a reputable name, mm -hmm. I said, well, let's do it. So, you know, we got things together. We opened October of 2015. And that very next month, that day, November 18, 2015, uh, we're in the shop preparing because usually Thanksgiving is our most highest day, our highest sales day. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to prepare for Thanksgiving and um, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, I mean, very clear, very loud. Like I've never heard the Holy Ghost before. Um, kept saying, I want you out of here at 430. That's okay, Lord. You know, but you know how you, we do. We, we kind of shug off when we hear the Holy Spirit speak. Um, but that day it was like he kept saying it. I want you out of here at 4.30. And I told, I looked at my husband and I looked at my mother-in-law who was helping us at the time. Um, I told him, I said, we got to get out of here at 4.30. And I kept looking at them. We got to get out of here at 4.30. And my husband was like, okay. Um, but we had so much to do because we had a delivery. Um, our fridge that we just bought was coming in that day. And we had gotten our green order that day, and we had literally <coughs> greens stacked up to the wall. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna show you guys a picture of all those greens that we had. Um, stacked, 
stacked up on the wall and we were processing all those greens and we had just so much that we were doing that day. But I kept hearing him say, I want you out of here at 4.30. And I kept saying it to them. So it was about maybe what, 12, one-ish that afternoon mm -hmm. that, you know, my, my husband had to go and pick up, you know, kids and, and, and things of that nature. And for the final time, I was there by myself because my mom, my mother-in-law had left and my husband had left to go and get the kids. Went to the bank. Went to the bank to get some, some um, change for customers. And for the final time, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I want you out of here at 430. He said it with a more authoritative voice that made me stop in my, in my tracks. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing all this work we still got to do. And, I'm, and I literally, just like I'm talking to you, I began like yelling at the Holy Spirit, like, Lord, do you see all this work we got to do? <laughs> like we, we, we still got greens in the, in, in the washer. We, we, we look. And when I said that the Holy Spirit stopped talking, I ain't hear him no more that day. So my husband came back from uh, the bank and um, we were up front talking about, you know, what we were going to do and all of that. And um, the new uh, cooler had just come. So we were up there cleaning the cooler out, you know, just having a conversation, discussing. And we kept hearing this ping, 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 ping. And I'm like, what the world is going on? I said, I, this is, this is, you know, November. There's no fireworks that should be going on in November. So we kept looking and we kept looking because we kept hearing the sound. But we didn't know where it was coming from. So when we looked up, when I looked up, because we were standing right next to the window, I'll, I'll show a picture um, of the window that we were standing in front of. We were standing right in front of the window. And when I looked up, all I could see was a barrel pointed like this in the window. And I was really close to the window. Um, and it scared me so bad to the point where I f literally froze. I, it was like, I could not move. Cause I'm like, where's Ashton Kutcher? W w am I being pumped? <laughs> like, like for real, where's the cameras y'all? Are, are we, is, are we on America's home? Most funny home videos? Cause this ain't funny. And this dude was standing in the window, pointing his gun at us. Blasted away. And when I, I I kind of got myself together, I, the next thing I hear my husband say is, run. And he grabs my arm and we I, I go to running. I don't, I'm, I'm going to let you tell that part because I don't remember what, once I took off running, I, I don't know what happened. I grabbed her by the arm and I swung her around from out of the window um to and having her to run to the back of the building uh which actually the back of the building had another door and another compartment so i'm having her to run out the way out of the fire and uh we thought somebody was out there with firecrackers at that time of the year but uh we figured out uh it's not december it's not july it ain't january <laughs> it ain't january <laughs> So uh, when the uh, windows start breaking, uh, the glass start breaking through the cage that was actually in front of the window. Um, we began to move and I said, run. And she ran towards the back door. And in the process of me turning and running behind her to make sure that she was out the way, I in turn uh, received a shot in the head and in the hip. And um, fell on, fell to the floor. Um, for a second there, I, th I think I lost, lost consciousness for a second uh, when I hit the floor because I'm not sure 
if my head hit the floor first, if my my body hit the I'm I'm not even sure how that happened. But when I reached back to uh because my head was throbbing so hard, I reached back to uh to my and to hold my head. And when I held my head, I felt my hand wet and uh, I had blood all over my hand. And um, my I, I can very faintly hear my wife's voice fading away, calling my name. And uh, seemed like I, I just could not speak. At that point, I lost all voice, uh, mobility, and everything. I don't know if my body went in shock uh, what have you, but it was an horrific situation. Uh, and about time she got almost out of harm's way, um, she caught one in the center of her, of her back. And it, the last thing I heard as I was running was I heard my head. So I heard him say my head and I'm thinking, oh God, you know, he's gotten hit in the head. But I'm steady trying to run because literally bullets are flying past my head. Bullets are flying past my body. And I can tell you with a certainty, that's why I know God was with us that day. Despite oh, my disobedience, I put, as I was running towards the back, I felt felt when the bullet hit my back but also I put my hand back here as I'm still running and I felt something else hit my hand I don't know what it was but something else hit my hand and it's like it just dropped so it was like something was behind me and it was keeping whatever was coming I felt stuff hit me but it was dropping to the ground it wasn't actually hitting me but I felt it like graze my hand, but it wasn't going through my hand. It was nothing. It was like literally like dropping right off my hand. I got hit one time in the back, but there was other things. Hit. It was something else hitting me, but it wasn't, it, was, it didn't pierce me. And so I finally fell to the ground and um, kind of dog crawled to the back and and the, the bullets were still flying. I don't know how many guns this man had, how many uh, clips he had, but it was like he was emptying them. There is still gun shells in that place to this day. He was firing so many times. And literally, also what was funny, because God got a sense of humor, even in that type of situation. Mm -hmm. As I'm going through the door, it was like the Lord slowed down time. <laughs> and... I, it's like my head turned. It's weird that you getting shot at and the one thing you look at is the clock. That wasn't me. That was the Holy Ghost trying to get my attention. Literally, my head went towards the clock as I'm going through the door. And it was like, clearly I could see what time it was. And it was 4.45. <clears throat> it was like the Holy Ghost saying, you see what I'm saying? 4.30, your behind should have been out of here and you wouldn't have been there. So that's how I know God will protect you if you listen. But if you don't, there's consequences. We I had to wear the con we had to wear the consequences yeah. of my disobedience because I didn't listen. The Holy Ghost was trying to get us out of there, mm -hmm. but I didn't listen. And that's when bad things happen to good people is because you have to listen to the Holy Ghost cuz he will speak, but you have to definitely listen. So as I'm going through, and I'm going to show you a picture of the hole in the door that went right past me. I felt it. Went right past me. And I'm going to show you that picture. But when I dropped to the ground and I dog crawled, I got behind the wall because I felt like I needed to get more protection just in case he keeps firing. So I crawled around the wall in our prep area. And I just, I laid there and Johnny come lately, <laughs> Mr. Earl comes out of his office. What happened? What what happened? He was Johnny come lately. Uh, what happened with his pistol? You too late. 
to the party. Right. We don't got shot now, you know. Um, he was already in the building. He was already in the building. In he his was office. In his office, basically sleeping through the whole thing. Yeah. And um and we we I'm I'm like I'm shy. I'm back to screaming. I'm sh I'm shy. I'm shy. I'm shy. Um and so I'm laying out on the floor. I'm I'm bleeding. I wasn't bleeding out, but I I did feel some blood. Um, on my, was my shirt was wet. The, the shirt that I had on, the blouse I had on was wet. Um, but I, I'm shy and I'm hollering and screaming. And the Holy Ghost said, this is not unto death. Calm down. Kind of like that, like calm down. And, um, there was the lady from the barbershop. It was her name, Tiffany. Yes. I believe her name was mm -hmm. Tiffany. She was the only one that came in cause she, um, had served in the military and she came in and she grabbed a cloth and put it on my wound and kind of was pressing hard because she was like I, I know it hurts but you know I need to press it to make sure that you know you don't bleed out that mm -hmm. it, it the bullet cauterizes the area and you know you you know it, it will she seal it, it. Yeah. basically and so um, she was you know just keeping me calm just talking to me and I, I'm in there asking questions like, like, why? Where's my baby? Somebody got my babies? Cause I'm worried about, you know, my children at this point. Where are they? And um, she was like, don't worry about it. They, they got the babies. Don't worry about it. So she basically kept me calm until the paramedics came, and they, they got me. And I'm. You was asking where. I and was. I'm asking where's, where's my husband? What happened to him? Because the last thing I heard was my head. So. Um, he was like, you know, don't worry about it. He was like, you know, we normally take the person that's wounded the worst first, and then we get anybody else, and we're taking you first. He was like, so your husband's okay. Don't worry about it. But they wouldn't tell me where he was because I didn't see him. Um, all I know is he's. I'm on the stretcher going out um, of the building, and there is glass everywhere. There is bullets everywhere there is just everything is just shattered everywhere and i'm going to show you pictures of what it looked like um after this but the place was a mess and um we got to the hospital and of course they had us under fake names because once you are involved in a shooting they don't want your real identities um just in case someone is after you to come mm -hmm. to the hospital and try to do anything. So, um, we're there and I'm still, I still haven't seen my husband. I still don't know what's going on. And, but I found out when my mom got to the hospital that he's down the way from me and I'm up, you know, in, in my bed, like a bed over from him. Um, and they take us for cat scans and all that kind of stuff. And they told me that they didn't want to remove the bullet because if they remove the bullet, it may cause more damage than good. They were just going to let it, you know, stay in and um, it wouldn't hurt the, the place that it was in because it was near my spine. So they didn't want to remove it, um, and, and you know, cause to keep me from being paralyzed. But the place that it was in, it was protected because it was kind of like in a fat pocket or in a, a big, it was in the muscle by my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So it was it was in a contained place. Um, so. so what I neglected to tell you guys, I forgot to add this to the testimony that the bullet in my back, actually it closed up. And then after I had my son, I was having tooth issues and began taking antibiotics because of that. My body rejected the bullet by itself and it came back out. So I don't know what they, with with his wounds, basically it was an in and out. It went in one place and came out mm -hmm. um, in her in his hip and uh, his head. It was just a graze. Um, it didn't actually. It went through the skin. It went through the skin and yeah. cut. You know uh, the little meat that's uh, on your on your head. Yeah. And caused a, a deep good gash. Yeah. But it it didn't hit the actual skull itself. Um, so we thank God for that. And one of the things that I remember that night was the doctor came by and he said, somebody upstairs love y'all. Mm -hmm. He said, because the amount of bullets 
in that place, y'all shouldn't be here. And same thing, the detective said the same thing. He was like, somebody upstairs watching out for y'all. Amen. He was like, because you should not still be here. Um, so, of course, on the news they released that they've caught the person who shot us. And the situation was, contrary to popular belief, all the lies that was out there after we got shot. What actually had happened was the young man that shot us, uh, Denzel, actually uh, got into an argument next door with the barber who was next door. Mm -hmm. And they were outside of the barber shop um, near his car. And they were like, you know, showing guns and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, talking trash. Mm -hmm. And he left and went and got drunk, went and got high. And he came back. And he had no idea where, what he was doing, who he was shooting. He was shoot. He thought he was shooting into the barbershop, but he wasn't. He was shooting into our place of business. Right. So um, he had actually absolutely no idea what was going on. And so God kept us through all of that. Yeah. And not only that, people don't realize that we didn't really work. Um, we tried to keep the shop going, but we really didn't work after that whole situation happened. And we still had bills coming. Yep. And so God kept us through all of that. He kept our household. He kept us going through mm -hmm. all of that. And when we finally went to court, because it took like five or six years for them to actually take him to court. Um through COVID and all that stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. And when we actually finally went to court, what was sad was he had maintained his innocence the whole time. He said, somebody was chasing me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, that's it was self-defense. That's the reason why I shot in. I was sh shooting back at somebody, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, mm -hmm. But kind of when they... Out. From the, from the detective and one of the things that um, incriminated him was that we had video footage mm -hmm. in the building where we were and he didn't see the video and whatever counsel he had they didn't inform him that there is a live feed uh, from the incident where it shows you clearly shooting in the building. The only one. The only one the shooting only in the building. Shooting. Was it anybody chasing you? Nope. Matter of fact, you wasn't going away from the building. You was coming, coming towards, towards the, the building. building. <laughs> so, you know, if somebody's shooting you, shooting at you, or coming at you, you will go away from the building. But you were coming to the building. So um, that uh, incriminated him. Uh, on on he cr incriminated himself. Um, so after his counsel saw the video and uh, he was uh, claiming self defense in it all, you know he, he his mom blurted out in court, "You got to be kidding me! You didn't see the video." So uh, the judge gave him an opportunity, gave the counsel chance enough to view the video footage with him and when he reviewed the video footage in the courtroom with his mom and the attorney there he came to the conclusion that uh, he needed to have a come to Jesus meeting and uh, mm -hmm. real quick so he got up and he apologized to both of us and uh, begged our pardon and whatnot. And, you know, of course, you know, we, we are God-fearing people, amen, and we believe God for everything. And uh, we told him we, you know, we forgave him the day that he shot us. Because I knew, I knew that that was not him. Yeah, I, I I knew, and the reason why I know, um, and people may think I'm crazy, but it doesn't matter because my gift is my gift. 
that I've been able to see demonic spirits since I was a child. And I literally, that's why I was stuck. Not only was the fear paralyzing, but when I looked into his eyes, cause that's what I was looking at. I literally saw the demonic spirit. It was an assignment from hell coming, trying to come against us to get, to, to get us out of the way. Cause my husband, like I said, had been in revival and it was literally mm. breaking things in that church. Oh my God. And that last night, move. I believe would have been an amazing move of God. And the enemy, the night before, the night, but wait, the night before was bananas. Yeah. And so yeah. I know that next night would have gone to another level and the enemy didn't want that. So he had to stop it somehow. Yeah. And literally it was an assignment from hell against us. It just happened to use this young man to come against us. That just like the Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yeah. but against principalities and literally. high places. And I literally saw the enemy coming at us. And so I knew it wasn't him. And that's why we can't be so quick to be unforgiving or hold grudges against people when they do things against us because we don't know who's behind it. I just have a gift where I can see who's behind it. And so that's why it was it was so easy. I'm not going to say that I didn't have, have anger because I did. Yeah. Um, th that it took a lot from us. Um, how, it took, it a, took a lot, lot from, us. from us. I mean a lot. But ultimately, we had to forgive because God has forgiven us so many times um, and been faithful to us so many times. Who were we not to forgive um, yeah. somebody when they wronged us because the Bible does say if you don't forgive people their trespasses against you he won't forgive us Right. so we couldn't hold that against him and it was just I even found myself when we left the courthouse in the elevator I found myself shedding a tear Yeah. because it was like in the, in the courtroom yeah, actually it, it's another black man yeah, yeah. It's another black man. Young black man. Young black man. You know. Who, going to jail. Yeah. Being taken away that, from his his children and his, his child family, yeah. and his family, his mother. Um, it was sad. And he was only supposed to be here for the weekend because he was a truck driver. Yeah. Yeah. Never really been in trouble. Um, so when the, yeah. pro the state prosecutor, because they wanted to throw the book at him. They really yeah, did. They but did. they came to us and said... Would no you priors, be, you know. You know, would you be okay with, you know, us giving him a plea deal? And they discussed the plea deal with us, and we said, yeah, you know, yeah, because I knew that wasn't it wasn't him. I really did. So, um, God brought us through that. Yeah, it left it um, now being being totally transparent and honest with you. It has left some um residue. Oh yeah. Um it has left some side effects. Yeah. Um that comes along with being a shot victim, a gun violence uh, uh case, um which um in our case, you know, a lot of people have died from it. Um but the Lord allowed us to live from it and with that you know um th for a long time you know um she couldn't sleep but i was the worst one because checking windows oh my god <laughs> checking, checking doors, windows, doors um, you know yeah. um um and and we didn't before but we went out and got registered you know, for firearms and things of that nature, you know, because of, you know, we felt that we didn't want, we didn't want to get, get we caught, get caught slipping again. Yeah. again. Um, but at the end of the day, God is a keeper. Yes. And uh, he will keep those, those who want to be kept. Um, but PTSD is real. PTSD is The real. side effects from gun violence is real um it affects your family immediate family your kids those that live in the house with you even those that don't live in the house with you which is our case um 
my kids uh, got a hold to the the uh, the word that had happened. Um, my my uh, my mom had just left the 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 store we had just set a home yeah. you know at uh something before 4 30 we sent her home and uh she had just gotten home and gotten relaxed just to get a phone call that her son and daughter-in-law have gotten shot up at the store and uh um we thought we were going to die i i honestly thought we were going to die. And I remember laying on the floor, you know, uh, at telling the Lord, Lord, don't let us die like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we, we haven't finished our assignment and uh, I know we still have work to do. Don't let us die like this. Yeah. You know, in the middle of the floor and this, you know, don't let us die like this. And uh, I tell you uh, people that, you know, God definitely has been keeping us up until this present time. He's still doing great things for us. You know, um, my, as my wife said, you know, we went w without work for almost a year and a half, you know, and uh, every bill paid, you know, lights never went off. You know, we never got evicted or anything like that. We never went without food of the hospital coming out, there was such, and we didn't know it, but there was such a, uh, boy, a camaraderie of family members and friends and clergy. and clergy who were there at the hospital when we came out. Uh, but I will give accolades to uh, two or three pastors that really came out for us. And that was um, uh, my cousin all the way down in South Florida. And his name is Arthur Jackson III. Yes, one of the largest Baptist churches in uh, Miramar. So anyway, um, also uh, Pastor T uh, Terrence R. Gray came to our rescue and along with uh, the Honorable Pastor Jonathan L. McKnight yeah. Yeah. came to our rescue. And I tell you, they really um, helped us uh, when we needed help. You know, they came and they did as best that they could at the time, given the situation. So we thank God for them and what they contributed, contributed to our um, bounce back, if I can say it like that and you understand. Mm -hmm. So um, we, and while my wife now just coming out of breast cancer, the enemy don't care about your title. The enemy doesn't care if you are an apostle. He doesn't care if you are a teacher, pastor, uh, a, a leader in the body of Christ. He doesn't care at all. But I say this because I don't want to be long with it. She shall live and not die. I declare and I decree it. And I believe the word of the Lord. And it's something that she said to me that helped me. Because when we had COVID together, got shot together, um, I almost died from food poison, poison. And she said these words to me. She said, if we got shot and the Lord did not let us die, surely God is going to bring us through this. And even though she spoke it, time gets hard, y'all. Yeah. That pain is real. Yeah. For real, for real. Going through chemotherapy, chemo is what kill you. I'm telling you. Chemo is what kill you. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm telling y'all. It ain't cancer that kills you. It's the chemo that actually kills you. But going through that, the pain and the everything 
um, uh, radiation, things of that nature, is so excruciating. Uh, excruciating. I'm gonna tell you, this is a strong woman of God, strong woman of faith, and I believe that her best days. I believe that our best days are ahead of us. And uh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. We have a strong family. We believe the power of prayer. We hard men. <laughs> we, we are hard, hard men. men. Yes. <laughs> but I do want to, I want to say this and we're going to end it because I, I don't want you to be bored or, or to, to take up too much of your time. But I just came to encourage those going through a hard time because yes. what what brought me through that situation was looking back at what God had brought us from. Yeah. And I said, if he did it before, he's going to do it again because he's the same God. Yesterday. Yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. So me and God, we, we, we got history. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, like the songwriter yeah. says, me, me and you and you, yeah. we got history. We, we go got, way, way we back. Go way back. We could go back to 2015 and what you brought me through. So surely you're not going to let me live through a gunshot just to take me out of cancer. Yeah. God, I don't believe that. Right. I believe you're just giving me another testimony. Yes. So I, I, I hung to that. I clung to, I cling to that. As I was going through treatment, I said, God, I know I still have a purpose in this earth. Yeah. I know because what the, what the Lord designed to live, the devil can't kill. Right. Period. Right. The devil has to go to God and get permission to yeah. do anything to you. Just like he did Job. Just like he did Job. He said, Job, you can touch a body. You can touch his body, but you can't touch his soul. Right. That's mine. So the enemy can't do anything to you. Unless God allow it. And God allowed the enemy to touch my body. But I know he was going to bring me through and he was going to deliver me. And now I declare just like Job, double yes. for my trouble. Yes. Double for your trouble. Yes. Whatever the enemy has tried. The Bible says in his word that when the thief is found. Yeah. Yes. He owes you seven times what he stole. Right. And because he tried to steal my health, that means I've been added some more years. Right. But tr because he tried to steal my money and my finances through sickness, he owed me some more money. <laughs> because he tried to do this and that and that, my business, he owed me another business. Yes. Several businesses, Several. actually. Several. Because of what he tried to steal. So I want to encourage you all. God will bring you through. And just like God brought me through the last time we couldn't work, he God. brought me through this time when I couldn't work. Yes. And I had a job to go back to this time. Amen. I didn't have a job to go to the last time. I had to find a job. But this time I had a job to go back to. And yes, I got to get myself back. But the Lord's going to be there. I know that without a doubt. Why? Because he's brought me through this far. And he's not going to leave. He said, I'll be with you. Always. Always. Even. even until the end of the age. So I believe that God is not going to leave his people. If you don't walk away, he won't. He won't. He won't leave. So anything else you got to say, man? I will want to speak to somebody that is going to watch this video. And I want you to be encouraged with these words. Be not dismayed, whatever betides you. Remember that God will take care of you. Beneath his wings with love abide. Just remember from the days, the nights, the years, the months, the seconds, and the hours may come. Just know that God will take care of you because weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come if you don't give up. God bless you. God bless you all. We'll talk to you later. But remember, God is faithful. He's faithful. Even when we're not, He's faithful. He's faithful. So I'm going to leave you with that. We'll talk to you.